From Blue Sky witnessing record high traffic thanks to Twitter's downfall, to Musk suggesting a <laughs> measuring contest with Zuckerberg, here's why Twitter users are flocking to Blue Sky. Where were you when you realized Twitter now has a rate limit? It's like Elon is hell-bent on taking the Bird app down. Cause now you can't even doom scroll in peace. Yup, ever since he introduced Rate Limit, aka not letting you view tweets past a certain number, people ditched his site for its competitor, Blue Sky. For those of you who don't know, it's a new text-based social media platform that's backed by Jack Dorsey. Yes, the co-founder of Twitter. I couldn't think of a better rival if I tried. Blue Sky stated in a post that its systems were suffering some degraded performance as a result of record high traffic, while they're still in an invite-only beta phase. In order to address performance concerns, the platform had to temporarily halt signups as well. But then on July 2, 2023, their signups were restored. Oh, and get this. Pissed off with Elon clamping down on their social media usage, over 58,000 people joined up for Blue Sky. Compare this with the fact that the platform had 50,000 users overall at the end of April. Bet Jack sent Musk flowers. Now, let me tell you a bit more about this rival app. The software is powered by the AT Protocol, a decentralized networking technology that theoretically might even power future social apps and allow users to preserve their identities across many platforms. The Blue Sky Public Benefit LLC was established in February 2022, with Dorsey serving as one of the original board members and Jay Graber serving as CEO. In April 2022, the business tweeted that it had obtained funds totaling $13 million to ensure they have the freedom and independence to get started on R&D. The site itself works very much like a stripped-down version of Twitter, where you can click a plus button to send their version of a tweet, with up to 256 characters and up to three photographs. Yup, throwback to old Twitter. But here's the catch. Users can only join via invite, and they intend to allow an unlimited number of independently run communities to exist within the open source network. So, Blue Sky users could even transfer their existing followers, handles, and data to a new social program created by a third-party developer using the AT protocol. And unlike Musk, Blue Sky wants to find a different way to support its network, rather than through paid services and advertising, so that users can continue to use it for free. Oh, and they're not the only ones vying for the throne. There are more new Twitter competitors in the market, one you might have heard about a lot recently. I'll get to it in just a bit. A lot of eyes are also going towards the decentralized messaging software Mastodon, the German rival that takes pride in its decentralized, user-driven structure, and their usage also seems to have been fueled by the turbulence over at Twitter. In fact, the number of Mastodon's active users rose by 110,000 in a single day. Basically, the platform includes features like those of Twitter, but instead of being managed by a single organization, it's installed on hundreds of computer servers and is mostly managed by volunteer administrators who connect their systems. Wacky, not gonna lie. And then came threads. According to CEO Mark Zuckerberg, Meta's Twitter rival app saw 5 million signups in its first four hours of operation as it tried to lure users away from Elon Musk's troubled platform. Their charm, longer posts, a couple of celebrities, and a striking resemblance to its rival. Here, retweets are referred to as reposts, and tweets are referred to as threads. The app itself visually mimics Twitter despite some terminology changes, and it's the first time Meta's done something like this. Previous cases of the media giant imitating rivals include the launch of Instagram's Reels feature in 2020, which attracted attention for being just like TikTok's short-form content, well, the hashtag threads was trending all over Twitter, and Mark even took a dig at his competitor, saying an app with a billion users should be more considerate. Twitter had an opportunity, but they blew it. Since Elon Musk bought it in 2022, it's already well on its road to the one fate worse than death, irrelevance. The platform is more buggy, bodier, and spammier than ever. Which is funny because that's exactly what the Tesla boss came in to eliminate, and his promises to make it a free speech and bot-free sanctuary have imploded on itself, much like his SpaceX rocket. Yeah, I went there. The main charm of Twitter as a platform was its relevance. Let's be honest, it was never the largest social platform and it never actually earned much money. But as soon as something happened, people rushed to Twitter to find out more information. 
Its ability to gather data about the present, whether it was the passing of a public figure, memes, strange weather or traffic, you name it, it was all on Twitter first. Sadly, Musk's mistakes are erasing all that importance and giving other platforms a chance. According to the big guy, Twitter will become an everything app that offers everything from ride hailing to retail. But it's more likely that he'll turn it into his version of Truth Social, former President Trump's platform. In other words, a digital megaphone for a lone, raving narcissist with his loyal followers. After the controversial owner restricted the number of tweets users may view each day, Twitter users declared the site dead. The limitations, according to Musk, are only in place temporarily because we were getting data pillaged so much that it was degrading service for normal users. Uh, sure, people immediately accused the social media network of being understaffed because of all the drastic employee cuts and the apparent failure to pay payments to services including Google. Allegedly. Of course. Now, in addition to limiting the number of postings users may access, Twitter now requires users to sign in order to view tweets and profiles. This represents a big change from its long-standing policy of allowing anybody to view tweets on what Musk has often referred to as the digital town square of the world. That's not how public spaces work, my guy. Anyway, he explained the rate limit restrictions, stating that verified accounts will be allowed to scroll through up to 6,000 posts per day, while unverified accounts will only be able to see 600. After getting lots of backlash on that, and rightly so, the limit increased to 800 posts for unverified accounts and 8,000 for verified accounts, but he eventually decided to settle on 1,000 and 10,000 tweets, respectively. But the crackdown started to have an impact, apart from users flocking away, more than 7,500 users of the social media platform reported issues and outages. Not a good look for a guy who's already being sued by ex-employees. Yup, you heard me right. A former human resources manager at Twitter claims the business has withheld almost $500 million in severance pay. A class action lawsuit has been filed by Courtney McMillian, the ex-head of Total Rewards. Whatever that means. According to the complaint, Elon Musk was aware of the severance package before firing hundreds of employees, yet it claims that he objected to the expense. It's the most recent of the many lawsuits brought against the business because of the widespread layoffs that occurred after Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion. According to the lawsuit, around 6,000 people were ultimately impacted by the layoffs. Employees were expected to get a minimum of two months base pay in severance, as well as a cash contribution toward health insurance under Twitter's severance plan, among other benefits. Also, those who held more senior positions like McMillian were entitled to severance compensation equal to six months of their base income, plus one week for each year of experience. But after being fired, employees received at most three months of compensation. To comply with a U.S. law geared at giving employees notice of terminations, it includes one month of severance compensation as well as two months' pay. The guy made his own laws then? Oh, and it's not the only hands he's worrying about right now. After hearing about Zuckerberg's threads announcement, Musk asked the guy to meet him in a cage fight. And if that wasn't enough, he suggested having a literal <laughs> measuring contest, too. Yup. Musk stated on Twitter that he'd be up for a cage fight with the Facebook CEO. In response, the CEO of Meta posted a screenshot of Musk's remark with the words, send me location. I don't know about you, but Musk versus Zuckerberg would be UFC filthy rich CEOs. And it sounds like a lot of fun to me. Think about it. Musk is physically bigger than Zuckerberg and has admitted to participating in real hardcore street fights while growing up in South Africa. But then, Zuckerberg is an aspiring MMA fighter who's already excelled in jiu-jitsu competitions. It'd be one of the most fascinating fights ever, regardless of the outcome. Somebody make it happen. So, from Musk suggesting a measuring contest with Zuckerberg, to Blue Sky witnessing record high traffic thanks to Twitter's downfall, that was why Twitter users are flocking to Blue Sky.